being on the other side, I think really helps me to understand when management communication should be taken at face value and when you really have to dig in and try to see what they might be trying to hide. Um, so it's kind of that experience um, basically behind enemy lines, if you like, um, which I think um, adds an extra bit of flavor to what we can provide as analysts. So my background has actually been in mathematics and economics. And even from the start, from when I was a junior analyst, I actually always felt that there was a lack of rigor in terms of how a lot of analysis and modeling is done. Um, simply because I feel a lot of analysts tend to fudge their numbers and there's nothing which really prevents that. Um, but as you've had the rise of quant funds and a lot of data analysis and AI, um, what I feel is that there is an opportunity to bring a lot more rigor to the space um, and actually apply a lot of the principles from big data analysis and um, alternative data and apply that even to more traditional fundamental analysis. I'd say that there's probably three main things. Um, one very simply is that um, most of my career is on the buy side. So I have very much a buy side mindset. Um, so there's no parroting of company narratives or anything like that. Um, and I think that's a very simple form of differentiation in that we are very, very different from traditional sell side analysis. And to an extent, even from a lot of IRPs. Um, the second factor I think is that we're very data and numbers driven. Um, and we feel that our process is actually quite a lot more rigorous than um, how that analysis is traditionally applied in fundamental analysis and modeling. Um, the last thing is I was actually lucky enough to have the opportunity to be part of a management team um, of a startup company that grew and eventually listed on the Tokyo Stock Exchange. Um, and after, this was actually after I had experience as an equity analyst. And, it was very beneficial to me because I feel that that gave me an inside look into how managements actually think about investors and think about communicating with investors. Um, and being on the other side, I think really helps me to understand when management communication should be taken at face value and when you really have to dig in and try to see what they might be trying to hide. Um, so it's kind of that experience um, basically behind enemy lines, if you like, um, which I think um, adds an extra bit of flavor to what we can provide as analysts. We offer three main services. Um, so the key service that we offer is actually helping investors bridge the gap with Japanese corporates. If they don't happen to have um, a Japan specialist with say 20 years of experience, that's a gap that we can fill. So we can do very simple things like offering translation for company meetings. Um, we can have company meetings on behalf of other investors, or it can be something as simple as a call to simply help teach um, investors about exactly how they should interpret specific company communications or the history of a company and interpret um, how data and company decisions uh, should be taken uh, given the context of Japanese culture as well as that company specific culture. Um, in addition, another service that we offer is providing very simple information packs. So this is leveraging our team in Sri Lanka, which um, has a lot of analysts who are extremely competent in terms of information gathering as well as um, quantitative and data analysis. So where investors need um, specific and consistent um, information to make investment decisions, but feel that doing so themselves or with their analysts would not be so cost efficient. Um, that again is a service that we can offer. And in addition, if they want this done on Japan and have um, language needs, translation is also something we can offer. Um, and lastly, we do have very specialized um, data skills. Um, this particularly applies to alternative data and this is much more complex, but if investors have interest in alternative data, but have been finding it difficult to actually 
make it work and generate alpha with it. We have significant experience in this area and we've kind of already made a lot of the mistakes that can be made. And we think we understand why a lot of efforts actually fail. So if you would like help in this area, that's also something that we can help with. In terms of our support for dealing with Japanese corporates, um, I think the main use case is for clients who do invest in Japan, but perhaps are not um, especially focused on it and therefore are quite um, selective in terms of the corporates that they look at in Japan. Um, for clients um, with that profile, it probably doesn't make sense for them to maintain a specialist Japanese analyst. But if they would like to have um, high level of expertise nonetheless, that again is an area where we can fill a gap. And in particular, I think that we can definitely help because we understand both Japanese corporate culture as well as typical foreign investor culture. And therefore, a lot of the time we can try to explain where there may be gaps in terms of understanding or interpretation. Um, and therefore we can help um, investors either identify hidden value or identify potential pitfalls that they should avoid. There are two main reasons actually. So the first reason is simply related to the tech of the platform itself. Um, the UI UX of smart commerce platform we feel is by far the best um, of all the alternatives on offer. Um, and in particular, when we were first working with Smart Karma, what we were really impressed with was the speed and pace of development. Um, and we felt that that showed that um, Smart Karma really had an edge in terms of understanding um, the backend tech platform. The second thing was um, maybe something more important, actually. Um, it's just in my interactions with the management team of Smart Karma, as well as some of the early insight providers. Um, I was really impressed in terms of the combination of confidence as well as trustworthiness. And one thing I've found um, during my career is that it's usually quite easy to find the odd person who's extremely capable and also trustworthy in any organization, regardless of whether it's extremely poor or extremely um, good. However, when you can find um, those traits broadly across um, entire teams or companies, that's a much stronger sign that um, that company is headed for success.